In this day and age of the internet, it's unfortunately easier than ever to stalk, exploit, or do anything really. You hear so many horror stories and it seems never ending. A bright side to those dark and disturbing corners are people who want to help, give input, and put a daunting mystery to rest for someone's peace of mind, and sometimes safety. r slash RBI is a place for that. If you have anything from a harmless search for a blue chin guy or are seeking advice for deep family secrets, they got your back. Today we're going to be diving into another curation of some of the most unsettling posts from that subreddit. We will get right into it, but first I need to say... The internet's become a helpful place for us to seek advice on anything that may be strange. But the internet can also sometimes be the cause of our worries and is dangerous if you aren't mindful. Privacy and protection are more important than ever before and thankfully today's sponsor is a perfect fit for what this video is about. Alice VPN provides internet security with the click of a button. It is extremely user friendly and they're running a huge sale that you can snag by clicking the link in the description. It's a three year subscription plus three months extra for just $183 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee. This is the most affordable deal you're gonna find for a VPN, so get on it while it lasts. A virtual private network acts as a protected encrypted tunnel for your data and internet traffic. This shelters you from online dangers like an unsafe website or public Wi-Fi risks. Atlas will hide your IP address, give you the ability to keep your Google searches private, and block all malicious links or trackers. A wonderful benefit of Atlas is you can protect all of your devices with a single subscription. The coolest features of Atlas VPN are being able to access movies or shows on Netflix that you normally wouldn't be able to, and saving money while browsing online for subscription services, flights, hotels, and more. We all love a quality liminal vibe hotel. So to get a massive discount on online shopping and a VPN while it lasts, click on the link in the description for your three-year subscription plus three months extra for $183 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thank you for watching the ad and thank you to Atlas for sponsoring this video. With that being said, let's get back into it. Extremely unsettling medical YouTube channel. Investigation has started in another thread. User a rigged reef linked to this channel named Medical Panorama Medico. OP said the narrators of the channel appeared to be drugged and how there had been a thread on r slash deep into YouTube where commenters were exploring the channel and the safety of those that were featured in it. OP turned to RBI for some further input on the situation. Before we dive into the comments, a summary of this channel is these two women who frankly do appear to be under the influence of something based on their slurred speech patterns and the way they're acting. They talk about various medical topics or issues like heart failure for example but the execution of it is so odd and something is distinctly off about it. Based on the fact the video posted to r slash deep into YouTube and every video linked in the comments is now unlisted, I'm sure there were plenty of other videos on the channel that have since been unlisted or deleted as well. So we're missing some pieces, but I tried to put everything together best I could. Their about page reads, Our research focuses on human life. Our antenna, however, has no boundary. If life molecules start in space, the entire universe will be brought into the field of our vision. Science demands factual evidences, we take it further. It is in our belief that we live in a God's universe. Anything less than a fact is blasphemy. We are God's loyal servants. We are the people chosen by God in the 21st century. Our works are prompted by God. If you find your work that is assimilated into our project, it means that God has used you and recognized your talent. It is always a great honor when God finds us useful. Our work is freely available for that reason as well. While we appreciate the freedom, we know it doesn't come lightly. Many people work hard to ensure the freedom for us. It may stand for your personal commitment to God, but we still appreciate you as a person. Dr. Yan Yarn and team. Okay, so then who the hell is Dr. Yan Yarn? I want to make it very clear before proceeding that these are real people and I don't want anyone watching this to harass anybody involved. The thread was filled with personal information and other things that I won't be sharing. We're going to focus solely on the YouTube channel and some very public history that was found of said doctor. I think it's a delicate topic to handle and I'm going to try to do so as tactfully as I can. If you have any feedback about my way of handling it, please let me know because I don't want to be a nonchalant, desensitized, reddit arm 
armchair psychologist. That's the opposite of what I'm going for. But now it's time to get into some of the Reddit comments, and I'm warning you, this one is a rabbit hole. User Sky Setter theorized that at the least, the so-called doctor was trading opioid prescriptions for the women to make the medical videos. They pointed out a concerning video on the channel about wound care, where one of the women isn't only talking about wound care, but demonstrates it on her own large thigh wound. This naturally made people worry more about their safety and began researching further. Users were commenting on the uneasiness of it all. Cool Dimension said, It's like the same kind of sick feeling I felt when I watched Gummo for the first time. It wasn't long until a very strange discovery about this Dr. Yon Yarn was made. User Polyglot77 commented, I just went down a deep rabbit hole to find out more about this. Here's what I have. Dr. Yon Yarn apparently also goes by Dr. Edwin Zong. Edwin Zong killed a man in self-defense who apparently attempted to rob his clinic, where Zong provides Suboxone and other drugs in the Bakersfield, California area. Dr. Zong chose to do this interview about the shooting while still wearing his bloody clothes. They also supposedly found a photo of him on Facebook in the same bloody clothes, and it shows a Christmas stocking in the background that has childhood photos of Courtney on it. One of the women featured in the videos, the one with the thigh wound. This comment mentions three women, but everything I could find was only of two women, Gracie and Courtney, so I'm honestly unsure if there was a third at the time. They added a quote from the shooting article how a pharmacist at a Walgreens in Bakersfield said Zong's prescriptions were suspicious, with odd quantities of pills being prescribed. 43 or 46 pills instead of the usual 30 or 60, for example. Polyglot77 found a book of his on Amazon as well, so they provided us with a ton of helpful info. Oh, It's Mia's was able to track down his medical registration data and said it hadn't been updated since March 2018 indicating he could have stopped practicing medicine since then. They shared an image of his old clinic on Street View, specifying how it looked kinda grim for a doctor's office, and how they'd seen him listed on different sites as specializing in wildly different areas. Anesthesiology, psychiatry, internal medicine, osteopathy, etc. So, it seems sketchy. The interview while in the bloody clothes is just completely bizarre to me. And additional details about this dynamic of the two women and Dr. Dr. Zong began to surface on the thread. Woody Creek Ranch said, These women are in and out of jail frequently. The one woman, Gracie, posted how she is going on a 15-day jail sentence. That was only a week ago. This user replied with, Yep, searching Courtney's name brings up three charges as well but just back in 2013 to 2014, which is around the time she met Zong. Then my secret weapon commented, what is this? I think this is the same court slash Courtney and linked to a YouTube video that is King Court's rap song. It's just this picture of her and the song plays in the background. Carbonar said, if you go to the video, there's a comment where she states the doctor is her husband and they've been together for nine years. Also that he helped her get clean. So they're married. This user found more evidence of their relationship online and said they even have children together. A lot of the videos seem to be based around Dr. Zong's theory that climate change is leading to lower oxygen levels in the atmosphere, which is making people sick. He also believes that this state is the same as hypoxia in humans, and thus the earth can be treated medically just as you would a human patient. It's all pretty out there, and it kind of seems like two people with mental illness feeding off of each other. Ultimately, I don't think the YouTube videos themselves are as sinister as people here think, though the people behind them are sketchy. Dr. Zong's practice was closed after he killed a man, and he doesn't seem to have a practicing clinic up and running again. This is probably his and Courtney's scheme to make money by making videos for a mostly Chinese market with white girls as the spokespeople. The other girl, Grace, is a friend of Courtney's, probably getting high off Zong's supply too. Dizzy Yang said, Looks like Courtney is still active on her Twitter as well. Yesterday, she tweeted at Donald Trump, inviting him to go to Chinatown Buffet on Wednesday, lunch on them, saying they can discuss global warming. This whole thing is hella weird, but also considering they're from Bakersfield, I feel like it isn't completely out of the norm. Gonna keep looking into it, but if y'all think we should report it, then I could add Bakersfield PD to a link on Twitter, but I don't know if it is truly that serious. Alazi Adventures did send an email to the Bakersfield police with info about Dr. Zong and his channel, but noted how there probably isn't much that can even be done by the police and that the clinic closed after the shooting.
doing. This user said it's clear whatever they're doing is their own free will and they'd probably be pissed if you tried to rescue them. That they get being concerned since it's not fun watching people in that condition, but how some of these comments were bordering on doxing. Which brings me to my point earlier about handling this tactfully because some people in the comments were taking this a little too far and didn't seem to remember that these are real people. Rich29R said, Concerned about all this so I did some digging. It's clear a non-native English person handles the YouTube comments but one of the chicks in the video just posted on Instagram five minutes ago laughing at this Reddit post and what it did for her page views. I just say everyone is benefiting from the situation, but I wish these girls could find someone who really wants to help them. Hard to do if all they want to do is get buzzed for free. Like sure, this is something they are technically all consenting to, but this user put it perfectly in response to someone saying, they are clearly heavily medicated, but I doubt it's against their will. This is where things start to get muddied. If you're suffering from addiction and the person who supplies your addiction is asking for favors in exchange for what you need, then there's a real power dynamic imbalance at play, especially if you're addicted to a substance with a withdrawal that can cause serious health issues, even death. Someone could still argue that they're deciding to live like this, whatever, get over it, let them be. But just as this user mentioned in response to someone having the opinion that everyone should just leave them alone, there's children involved, which makes the situation very different. This same user claims to have been an old patient of Dr. Zong's and confirms the speculation of his immoral practice. Summed up, he'd alleged to help addicts recover from their disease, but would end up doing the literal opposite, leaving patients coming back for more of his prescriptions. This user said he also did some shady shit with their insurance, and it sounds true so screwed up. User Kickstain worded it as based on all the evidence we know, he basically became a legal dealer. And their theory is the women used to be patients, he offered them a place to stay and possibly other favors in exchange for prescriptions and this is how they began their relationship. That the reason for the channel may be to gain attention of other addicts seeking prescriptions. Other people in the thread had the same theory as to why he made this channel. So children and possibly other patients of this doctor could be in danger. My view on it is if this were a few adults that were living their life the way they wanted, it'd be none of our places to talk about this or speculate anything. but. There are children involved, which makes it a lot more scary. And it makes me not want to just turn a blind eye and shut up about it. But this kind of thing unfortunately happens all around us, and it's honestly tragic. I hope the best for anyone involved. Help. Is my Airbnb haunted or am I being watched? I travel most months out of the year and I just landed last night in Lima, Peru for an extended stay. I got a pretty fancy Airbnb in a nice location on the ocean. It had really great reviews and I've already paid $7.50 for this month to stay here. It is an apartment with the main door with two tables in it on opposite sides of the room a bedroom with a locking door, and a bathroom which you can only access through the bedroom. It also has a balcony with a sliding door that leads into the main room that can be locked. I arrived last night and some weird things have started to happen since I got here. When I came in the apartment after my run this morning, I locked the door and set the keys on the counter. I 100% remember doing this. I then left my shoes in the main room and smoked a cigar in my kitchen. I lit my cigar with my personalized lighter that I carry with me everywhere. I then went and took a 20 minute shower. Then weird thing number one happened. When I came back to the main room from my shower, I went to get my lighter and it was gone. I looked everywhere for it, but I was really confused because I know I left it on table number one. After looking everywhere, I finally found it on the other side of the room on table number two, which I haven't even sat down at since coming to this apartment. I thought it was super weird, but I tried not to freak myself out over it. Then weird thing number two happened. I went to get my keys so that I could go get some food. I go to the kitchen counter and they are gone. This in conjunction with the moved lighter starts to freak me out. So I look literally everywhere. I turned the entire apartment upside down, I looked in the refrigerator, I took apart the bed, I went through every pair of clothing I had, and I even looked under the trash bag in the trash can. I looked everywhere and nothing, I couldn't find them. Weird thing number three. I started to get a bit paranoid, but I'm still hungry, so I go to put my shoes on so I can get food. And there is a razor blade in one of my shoes. I do not just own straight up razor blades. There are no razor blades that I know of in this apartment. Where the F did this razor blade come from? So now I start to freak out and I call my friend and go on my balcony and talk to him for like 15 minutes to explain what's going on. He tells me to start looking through my apartment for cameras. I start pulling the place apart, 
looking at the wall decorations, etc. I'm doing this for about 10 minutes before I get to the kitchen and my keys are back on the counter. What is going on? My friend thinks someone might be somehow watching me either by a camera or double-sided glass or something and is trying to mess with me or threaten me. I also am worried about that or wondering if my apartment is somehow haunted. How do I figure out what's going on? I feel unsafe, but at the same time, I paid $750 for this apartment and I doubt I will get it back if I leave now. How do I figure out if someone is watching me or breaking into my apartment? Any advice is appreciated, thank you. I think it's safe to say that the Airbnb wasn't haunted, but the razor blade took this post from maybe OP is misremembering where they put their lighter to get out of there now. Understandably though, people wanted to rule out the whole carbon monoxide possibility as Redditors tend to do. In response to being asked if it could be carbon monoxide poisoning, OP replied saying, that's what a few people are saying and I'm kind of concerned. I don't feel lightheaded and I was on my balcony and breathing fresh air. How would I know if it is carbon monoxide poisoning? Are there any telltale signs besides headache? I'm not sure if there is a carbon monoxide detector and what it would look like so I could find it. Cat Go Meow said, long term carbon monoxide survivor here. It usually doesn't put razor blades in your shoes. Tiredness is the biggest symptom. You would feel totally zonked out of it and heavy. Other users mentioned how OP would be feeling nauseous and experiencing a lot of other symptoms that she appeared not to be. BZ237 said, that seems like a really short period of time and a big risk for someone to get your keys on the counter. Not to mention very easily caught as you are moving around the place frantically searching. You sure you didn't just overlook them? Also, why would this person go through this much risk to put a razor blade in your shoe or move your keys? You might be just trooping out of it and or sleep deprived. OP said she was not under the influence of anything and got a normal night of sleep. So unless she's experiencing a psychosis episode for the first time and is unaware, she probably needs to get out of there. There are no ghosts. There are perverts and weirdos. Roy Parsons commented, absolutely not worth further risking your safety, OP, especially being that you're there alone. Ghosts don't exist. So unless you are having a psychological episode of sorts, someone is messing with you. Certain kinds of people don't need much of a reason beyond the satisfaction of watching you suffer. Don't bother wasting your time looking for where they are hiding a camera or themselves. Just get yourself safe and start the process of getting refunded at a hotel. The process of getting refunded is a big key to the possible cause of the disturbing sequence of events. Does the Airbnb get to keep your 750 if you leave? Maybe they're scamming people by booking it to people, freaking them out, and then booking it again with someone new when the freaked out person leaves. Parked Dingo Brains pointed out some holes in this theory. Specifically, why would the Airbnb owner risk OP actually putting on the razor shoes because it'd lead to a whole bloody mess? Regardless of if the scam theory was true, this user said, leave now, your life is worth more than $750, and I'm sure Airbnb will refund if you tell them there was a break-in. Another theory that at first I thought was a little outlandish was witchcraft. Not literal witchcraft causing a razor blade to pop up, but user Pebble Demons said, having spent some time in Peru and being married to a Peruvian, when weird shit starts happening like that, never rule out witchcraft. Weird shit in an article of clothing? Check. Shit that you take with you almost everywhere goes missing then reappears? Check. The razor in your shoe could have been an attempt to get you to spill some blood or a razor in the shoe was part of the ritual and someone could have taken the key slash lighter to put some kind of malicious spell or whatever you call it on them because you'll almost always have one of those things with you. I don't believe in magic or ghosts, but witchcraft is very common in Peru. My wife's family has a family psychic, which is very common, sort of like having a family dentist or a lawyer in the US. I'm not saying what happened was supernatural, merely that someone who you may have angered tried to perform some kind of ritual with your stuff. The Moo just replied with, owner doing a witchcraft ritual after being displeased by the cigar inside seems most plausible to me. I actually lean towards this theory being the answer, assuming the story is true. Razor blade in the shoe is pretty drastic to scare someone away. It's also a drastic reaction to cigar smoke, but no matter the reason, the culprit obviously has severe issues. Some users theorize the blade being a ploy to get OP to cut her foot and be unable to easily escape, paving the way for them to be able to rob or kidnap her. American commented, Lamau, you guys have some wild imaginations. Someone puts a flat razor in someone's shoe in an effort to hamstring them for a later attack. Come on. But whether it was some terrifying scheme, a scummy Airbnb owner trying to scam her, or witchcraft, this user said, uh, well, here's the thing. It doesn't really matter what it is, get the hell out now. If it's someone coming into the apartment, they want you to know they're doing it. You're already scared enough and questioning yourself. Get out and deal with trying to get a refund later. I hope you're safe.
And thankfully, per OP's update, she safely got out and spent the rest of her night at a different hotel. The question behind the freaky razor blade mystery has remained unanswered. I received two packages slash letters from a seemingly defunct California Raisins fan club at my home address with very rare 1980s collector's items. I know what you're thinking, California Raisins fan club unsettling my ass. I wanted to put this as a sort of comedic relief, but it genuinely is an interesting mystery. So hear me out and let's get into the saga. User relative made their first post eight months ago about receiving California Raisins merchandise in the mail. Within the last month, I have received two very mysterious letters slash packages from an organization claiming to be the California Raisins fan club. Images attached down below with personal info redacted. From what I have found, this fan club did at one point exist, but as far as I can tell, no longer functions. Here's the defunct official website. The post is just dated as current and I received the second letter from Honolulu, Hawaii about two weeks after the first from North Pole, Alaska. The name that it's addressed to is similar to my real name, but definitely incorrect. Is this connected to something or just a random mail bombing? Should I be concerned that they know my address? OP attached images of the item sent, a postcard, and their initiation letter. Silly Snowbird asked, why doesn't cool shit like this ever happen to me? And Magic Mail Knight insisted, they must have found out about you through the grapevine. Apparently so. One of the first suggestions was Googling the name plus California Raisins or OP's address plus California Raisins, but there were no results. This user then further speculated it could have been an item from eBay sent to the wrong address, but OP said, not a bad guess, curious how a second letter would come to the same incorrect address from a different shipping location. Also, the name is far too similar to mine to be a mistake or an insane coincidence. OP was asked if they had joined the California Raisins fan club as a child since the letter says, thank you for your patience. Hell of a long wait, but it makes sense. However, they weren't alive during the club's operating years, being 1987 to around 1990. Tell us more about the name thing. Does it seem intentional? Like Michelle Jones equals Michael Jones or a typo? I guess I'm curious if that can help us figure this out. Sure, I'll reveal what I can. The last name is basically accurate to mine with a typo, but the first name is off completely, other than the fact that it starts with the same letter. Without giving away too much, it's interesting to note that the mistaken name is the name of a character of a somewhat popular TV show based in California. The general consensus was this was someone yanking OP's chain and was nothing more than a prank. Perhaps someone OP knew that stumbled upon a bunch of California Raisins merch at a garage sale or thrift store, but the fact that the packages came from different locations made OP suspicious. Suspicious. Then, more people started posting about receiving unsolicited California Raisins items in the mail, but they provided no proof and ignored everyone, so we can assume they were some head-ass bandwagoners. Gluten-Free Sadness asked, did you try contacting the gentleman who signed the letter? Ask him, we need to know. But OP couldn't find anyone named Wesley Schneider connected to the California Raisins. But this user might have gotten us somewhere, saying it's a pseudonym for Wayne Wright Schofield, both bases of the 25th Infantry, both located in close proximity to North Pole and Honolulu. Even if I am wrong, check it out. Another helpful finding was the URL was first registered in 2007 and renewed last April. So the website alone was not set up just to mess with OP. And exploring the website led this user to dizzodesigns.com. I think there are probably more clues on the site. It's gotta be ran by whoever sent the letters somehow. The Raisin site is registered the same year the Dizzo Designs guy started graphic design school, according to his LinkedIn profile. Maybe the site was originally a design assignment slash project, and now he's jumped back to it, and voila, you're the random recipient of Raisin goodies. OP couldn't find any other connections from Dizzo to California Raisins after scouring his profiles and portfolio, but said they'd try to contact him via email and would update if he responds. Then deleted user commented, he has the California Raisins website listed on his portfolio. I'll remember where when I wake up a little, but I think bottom right under his contact info maybe? And then actually delivered with a screenshot of said California Raisin website info. So we were in fact getting somewhere.
OP went on to make an update post. I received another package and letter from a seemingly defunct California Raisins fan club. Thanks for everyone's support and comments on the original thread. I promise to keep r slash RBI updated, so here we go. Here's the latest images from the package I received just a few days ago from a USPS center, Kane County, Utah. Here you can see the contents of the package, this time including an air freshener and another letter. Of course, people rightfully wanted to know if the air freshener smelled like raisins, but we didn't get an answer. David Harris, the man behind Dizzo Designs, responded, but unfortunately had nothing to do with it and even said he was a bit jealous. Warm Blessed Caribou brought the Wesley Snyder lead back up, saying they remembered someone pointing out that the previous addresses were near military bases, then found a Facebook profile for Wesley Snyder who is listed as an inactive USMC officer in Virginia Beach. They added how there aren't any military bases near Kane County, Utah, and that it makes more sense someone is using a proxy service to send the packages. This user leaned toward the elaborate prank theory based on something silly like, for example, Maybe OP got high one night, and when the munchies kicked in, they were ranting and raving to their friends about how much they loved raisins. And this user said, you should set up a sting operation where you acquire rare raisins merchandise on your own, set up an eBay shop, and wait and see who bites. That brat from the Airbnb post has returned. They wrote more insight on the high possibility of it being a prank, but then added an edit that is the biggest lead in this saga so far. Forensically, your puffy print sweatshirt was sold for 30 bucks on eBay on June 15th. ID'd by matching the crinkles in the pink letters. Your prankster is spending cold hard cash on this endeavor. OP replied, this is 100% the sweatshirt. I just confirmed because the stain on the middle raisin's hand on this eBay listing matches the sweater I have. Purchased on June 15th. I wonder if this unlocks anything for us. Hold up. June 15th. That is the date OP made their original post. This gives a few different options in my head. It's OP themselves creating this California Raisin mystery. It is someone who knows their Reddit account and is following the posts. Or the package containing the sweater is from someone entirely different who saw the post. But then that begs the question how they would also find OP's address and each package consistently had the same spelling of their name as well. So there's like no way it's that. I'm confident now in saying Powerless over Queso had it right from the beginning. This has got to be either a prank or an ARG. Mystery kinda solved. But there was another update if you want to see some more California Raisins merch and Reddit comments. The California Raisin Care Package, this time around, included a recipe list for California Raisins Burger, singing ants, in parentheses, raisins, on a log California style. Tex-Mex Cal Cowboy California Raisins Mock Bean Chili and California Raisins Hollywood-style Famous Seven Layer Dip. A California Raisins board game, this, this, fashionable hat, and a cassette tape. It did not take long at all for people to track down the sold eBay listing of all of these contents. This was purchased on June 17th. People started to sense that there may be something fishy going on. My hunch is that you are a shill for Big Raisin. 14th Century Hood said, I feel like these are all troll posts and OP is having a laugh. Fake. Sure, I am having a laugh, but unfortunately, this is as real as it gets and I fear that the joke might be on me. Many Tomatillo5060 commented, I swear, I think this is some kind of contingency plan the diehard fans in the club made if the president or chieftain or whatever you'd call the leader of said fan club was killed, deposed, deported, eaten by zombies. Seriously, I think this is a person who was in the fan club and was like, hey, when slash if our club dissolves and you want to get rid of the stuff, mail it to me. And they lived at your address. And the similarities in names, easy. You were born to fulfill the destiny of carrying on the California Raisin legacy and named for the collector. This is now my official theory. Yeah, all right, let's go with that. Maybe half of the posts on RBI are fake and maybe the California Raisins fan club stalker is an elaborate ARG that we're falling for but I don't think that necessarily has to make it any less interesting. If you find the right balance of taking everything on the internet with a grain of salt, but suspending some disbelief, descending into these mysteries can be a fascinating, entertaining hobby to take up. And I wanted to share more of some of my favorites with you all. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've linked below each Reddit post in the description in case anyone would like to dive in further. There's an innumerable amount of mysteries out there. We can only hope some get solved. Thank you.